Hello my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope the Lord is blessing you on this beautiful day. Long time no see. It's probably been about four years or so since my last video. Um, I think the last one I did I was about six weeks off having my sixth baby and Ella is now, yeah, she just turned four in March so it's been quite a while. But uh, the Lord has been um, putting this on my heart for the last couple of weeks to get back into doing YouTube videos. As we all know, the world is, wow, so close. We are so close, brothers and sisters, and it's really exciting. So I just want to preface this video by saying, can we just take a moment to appreciate where we are in the timeline of the history of things? You know, we are the chosen ones to live through this time. We are the ones that are going to not taste death. We're going to see the kingdom of heaven and not taste death. We are the ones that the disciples so desperately wanted to be. We are that one generation that shall see all of these things happen. This is so exciting. And it is now not the time to live in fear, brothers and sisters. Don't let anybody take your faith. Don't let anybody take your happiness and your joy and your excitement for what's coming. We will not live in a spirit of fear because perfect love casts out all fear. So today my message to you is to remind you of God's promises because quite often you'll see in the Word of God that <clears throat> God himself actually asks us to call upon his words and to remind him of his promises for us. So that is what I want to do today and remind us all that we don't have to be scared. It is a turbulent time ahead, yes indeed. We're about to see some magical things happen with everything that's going on over in the States, uh, with Trump coming back and just all the wonderful things. I've got so many things I want to share with you today, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. And basically I want to, like I said, remind you of God's promises. I want to share a few uh, stories from the Bible to show you where in history this has happened before and what we need to do. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. The first one I want to do is basically in Mark 9. And the reason I want to read this is because it is very important for today's faith, I think. And I'm just going to go there now, Mark 9. Um, this video will be unscripted. I've been sitting here for three hours this morning writing words that I was going to say and I feel that it's not going to do me any good. I feel that's the enemy's way of procrastinating me from getting on doing these videos. So if I'm all over the place, please forgive me. I just thought I have to get on here. I have to do this. The Lord is calling me to do it now. The time is late. So I'm going to go to Mark 9. And I'm going to read you this. And I'll tell you why it's so important. Okay. <clears throat> just on the street here. Uh, Mark 9, 25. When Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps from this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind can only come through prayer. Okay, so that is one little thing that I want you to remember, that what we're about to go through can only be accomplished by prayer, okay, by prayer and fasting. This is like the legion of armies, that, uh, sorry, the legion of demons that were stuck in that man that lived on the, um, you know, the island, where all the people were like really scared of him because he was breaking off chains and going psycho and stuff. And he had, um, so Jesus came over to heal him. And um, when Jesus told him what that, asked the demon what the name was, he said, my name's Legion, which means an army of many, right? So we are facing an army of many, of principalities, of demons, of evil spirits. 
this is the war of good and evil we're in it right now so um okay this this is actually what i wanted to tell you it was uh mark 9 uh, 38 john said to him teacher we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us but jesus said do not stop him for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able to soon afterwards speak evil of me whoever is not against us is for us now that is very important that is one of the most important scriptures in the Bible, I believe, because we have a problem at the moment of being very decisive and very, um, a lot of division, a lot of, you know, you're in this church, I'm in this church, I'm right, you're wrong, whatever, whatever. We all are children of God, people who follow God, who love Yeshua, um, who believe that he is the son of God and that he died for all of our sins. All of those people in all of those religions, no matter who you are, young, young, old, rich, poor, whatever, we are children of God. And if we speak for Christ, we are for him, not against him. So with that being said, we can use that same logic with the books, with texts, with holy texts. I have a Bible here, the Holy Bible, with the Apocrypha. Now, before all of you scream at me and say, that's demonic, you know, those books were taken out for a reason. I want you to hear me out read the books that were taken out before you make judgment because just like i read that verse in mark 9 jesus said whatever is for us is for us and not against us so that would imply that if there are books or texts or sacred scripts that are out there that speak of god that speak of yeshua the son of god that speak of the end times that match and complement revelations or um matthew 24 or anything like, or anything from the bible then we should say it is for christ okay it is for god it is jesus doctrine so let's not be scared of the apocrypha because the apocrypha holds a lot of truth which we need today and i believe with my heart and soul that these are the books the apocrypha that daniel was talking about when god said to him um Oh, sorry, the, the angel said to him, you know, shut up the books now, Daniel. It's not for your time. It's for the time of the end. And then everything will be opened and revealed and so forth. <sighs> okay, I want to make, I want to show you. I'll give you an example, actually. In uh, the Apocrypha, this is the book of Esdras. Okay. One of the best books. It's full of signs of the end. And I want to read you something. That will show you exactly what I'm talking about so that when a script or uh, when a book a writing is said um, and teaches us about Christ and it is along you know, the following of Christ or if somebody does something like a miracle and, um, sit and uses the name of Jesus to perform that miracle that is for God okay so let me read this this is 2nd Esdras <coughs> chapter 2 verses 42 to 48 I Ezra saw on Mount Zion a great multitude that I could not number and they were all praising the Lord with song in the midst was a young man of great stature taller than any of the others and on his head oh sorry and on the head of each of them he placed a crown but he was more exalted than they and I was held spellbound and I asked an angel who are these my lord he answered and said to me these are they who put off mortal clothing and have put on immortal and they have confessed the name of god now they are being crowned and received palms then i said to the angel who is the young man who is placing crowns on them and putting palms in their hands he answered and said to me he is the son of god whom they confessed in the world now why would they take that out why would the powers and principalities that be take out something that was so beautiful something that gave us such an imagery of the wonderful event that we're all waiting for when yeshua places the crowns on our head why would they take that out it plainly says it is he the son of god the ones who 
had confessed in the world. They would be the ones who are saved. So that's telling you how to be saved and they've removed it. Okay, that's one. Now listen to this. This sounds very much like Revelation. This is chapter 4, verse 30, uh, 35. Um, did not the souls of the righteousness in their chambers ask about these matters? The souls under the altar of God in Revelation? How long are we to remain here? And when will the harvest of our reward come? And the archangel Jeremiah said, answered and said, When the number of those like yourself is completed, for he has weighed the age in the balance and measured the times by measure and numbered the times by nine times, and he will not move or arouse them until that measure is full, is fulfilled. Sorry. So that is like a direct compliment for Revelation when the souls under the altar of God are asking him, how long, God, how long do we have to wait until you, you know, um, just deliver your judgment upon our people? And, you know, and in Revelations, we get a white robe and we're told to wait a little longer until the, you know, it's equal. The amount of people that need to be saved are saved. We have to wait for that time, and that is only in God's time. So I just wanted to also show, and one more thing too, and he talks about, um, you know, Esther is asking, how long, how long is this going to be for? And it says in uh, verse 42, For just as a woman who is in labor makes haste to escape the pangs of birth, so also do these places hate to give back those things that were committed to them from the beginning. Then the things that you desire to see will be disclosed to you. So, again, he's using the analogy of a woman giving birth. This complements the rest of the Bible. And you have to know where the canon, the book, was put together. Council of Nicaea, it wasn't... Look, it's man trying to dictate the Word of God and what they uh, deem fit to put in it and what they think will... Well, the reason they took all this stuff out is because... The excuse was it was just too magical. It was just too, like, the people couldn't understand. A little feeble mind couldn't understand this stuff. So they removed it. And it is my knowledge that the book of Enoch was in the Bible and Revelations actually replaced it. And, I mean, uh, the book of Enoch was in the Bible. Of course it was. But it was actually the last book of the Bible. And then Revelation replaced that. So when you read the book of Enoch, revelations will be expanded like you would never believe. You would be able to understand it. You'll be able to see there's not so much horror and um, you know, doom and gloom. It's, it's just God, you know, and he's the law of order and judgment and, you know, the reward for the good and the punishment for the wicked. And it's, it's just all plainly laid out for us right there. But... That is why they have removed it, but it's also why they told Daniel that the books will be open in the end when we need them. So do not dismiss the Apocrypha books. They are holy books, I believe. And um, you will find a very, very um, interesting thing to note that the books that they did take out, like the Maccabees, for instance, <clears throat> now that is a historical account. These things happen. This is in the time period of Alexander the Great. Uh, so these things happen. Why take it out? Because I tell you why. In the book of Maccabees, it shows the originating story of Hanukkah, or the Festival of Lights. And how it was, was there was um, the Maccabee brothers, a, a father and his son. I'm just paraphrasing here. But basically, um, all of Israel... Um, started sinning, they, they, um, you know, they didn't obey by the Sabbath, <clears throat> they were eating foreign foods, sacrificed to gods, they were just, you know, they were turning into pagans, they were losing God, they turned their back on him. And um, basically there was one family, the Maccabees, that decided to say, no, we're going to stand by God, we're going to, doesn't matter if it's just one or two of us, right, they had to fight against the whole of Israel because they were just full of sin and had turned. So, you know, the ruler of that the day, Antiochus, I think his name was, 
he at first approached these the Maccabee um, father and son or whatever they were and said look you know the people love you come over on our side we'll give you great riches you can be you know some high person up in the palace just you know put your weapons down put your arms down and just come over to our side and he's like nope I'm going to stand here I'm going to stand for the faith of God stand for his um, commandments and anyway this went back and forth back and forth he, eventually he started sending an army to try and you know mandate the fact that he was trying to um, get rid of him because he was a thorn in Antioch's side so eventually the moral of the story is is that Israel started going hang on this guy's standing up and he cannot be defeated even when Antiochus was sending like tens of thousands of people to like armies against him he was winning what's happening here army of God the invisible the thing that we don't see because we haven't reached that level of spirituality yet okay so the point being is eventually after some time this bad dude and all his bad crew were driven out of Israel and that is when they went and rededicated the temple cleaned it all up put all the new um, furnitures and lamps and light you know cups and all the things that is required in um, you know to build a temple and they rededicated it and then put the lights up and that is where Hanukkah comes from and that is the true meaning of it and that's why it's so important to Yeshua that's why it's one of the only ones he went to in the Bible the only festival I think that he went to in the Bible because obviously Passover he was going to have Passover but you know they crucified him so I, I probably sounds like I'm digressing a bit but I just really need you to understand that what is the most important thing that we have to do right now as individuals as individual children of God is stand that's all we have to do is say I confess with our mouth let him let God know let others know around you I stand with God um, you know I'm loyal to the creator of the heavenly universe and everything that he that is he's created it so um, don't be scared of what's about to come because the army of God is something that you have no idea how massive it is what what Satan has down here with his little pissy army pff, you know God will be up and kick him to the curb we just have to believe now this is what I really wanted to get to today is the belief have you ever noticed the most important verse in the Bible the one that the movies copy and you know put in on the crazy guy walking with the cardboard oh the end is near John 3 16 that is really such an important <coughs> pivotal verse because it says whoever shall believe okay that's the only the only um, condition here requirement so not condition the only requirement here whoever shall believe on my son and that he died for me and you and all of our sins shall be saved that's it one plus one equals two okay so it's the belief and you know just how when um was it peter that was walking on the water you know he he was doing it he was doing it the second he doubted into the water okay the maccabees they believed that god was right the laws are just and they're going to stand for them and that's all they had to do is stand for him stand for God just like Jesus says if you are embarrassed to stand for me on earth then I'm going to be embarrassed to stand for you in heaven you know before God on judgment day I'm paraphrasing of course but you, you get what I'm trying to say here so my brothers and sisters please just say this because you know have you noticed the big fluctuation of the you know I am the I am I am wealthy I am rich I am this okay there's so much of the focus on making yourself into God you know which is a whole nother subject in itself but there is truth in the law of attraction if you want to call it that so why would that not be true for the principles of the universe you know for God 
not law of attraction, but belief. I believe, say, I believe and receive your gifts that you promised me in your word. I believe and I receive it. I always strongly believe that we need to confess with our mouth and say it. I believe your word, Father God. I believe your promises. I believe your protection. I believe that this time we have to go through. But just like Psalms 91 says, Father God, in your word, that, you know, 10,000 shall fall on my right hand and a 1,000 on my left. It could be the other way around. But nothing will touch me. Okay. I am under your wing. It's it's there. It's, it's believe it. But look at Daniel's, um, you know, in Daniel, the, the three Hebrews walking into the fire. Nothing touched them, not even smelling like smoke because they believed. Okay, so now something that's um, also on my mind, if you would know that late, lately there's been a lot of um, talk about a particular website which... Um, I suppose it's got lots of like little Easter eggs and um, secret bits that you can find out and it's sort of just alluding to the fact of everything that's gone wrong with the elections in the states and you know files that are coming out it's a really cool website anyway on on this website I found this little thing and it um, I could when I moved my mouse over I noticed I could click on it and it was a little, um, little caption like this just with the Hebrew uh, letters so I click on it and it brought me to the WikiLeaks page and it said the 12 spies. Now that this website, um, I'll put the link in the description to what I'm talking about, but it's all over TikTok and, you know, for people who are trying to, excuse me, find the truth, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, so I get get to this WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks page about the 12 spots and it talks about the story of, um, you know, in numbers, I can't remember what, anyway, remember how um, Moses sent out 12 scouts to go and scout the land, the promised land, because God said, um, you know, you're about to go into the promised land. So Moses said, all right, 12 scouts, you go out for 40 days, Go and have a look at this land and report back to me and tell me what you see. From those 12, only two, Jacob and Caleb, were the only two that came back and said, it's awesome, we've got to go, this is fantastic, I can't wait, let's do this thing. Whereas the other 10 came back and were like, oh, it's so scary, there's like people as big as grasshoppers there, we can't, there's no way we can go in there. Guess what happened? The two that believed, Jacob and Caleb, eventually got to see the promised land after some technically technical difficulties of going through the desert but those other 10 that came back with a bad report they all died from plagues wandering in the desert for the 40 years okay and you know why because they did not believe in God's promise God said I promise you I'm going to put you into the promised land and that's exactly what he's doing right now I promise you even though the world is on fire I'm going to bring you into the promised land. You just have to walk. Walk on that line straight up to, you know, stairway to heaven. That's all you have to do. So that is why it's so important that we believe. Because if we don't believe, what else have we got? What else do we have? You know, look what man's done to us. In the last since this whole COVID crap has come along, and that's another story in itself. Um, you know, man has turned their faith and direction to man and science. And that's become their God. No longer, no longer do we realize that God gave us an immune system, a fully functioning work of art within ourselves. As long as we look after it and protect ourselves, um, you know, and ask the Lord to bless your food. That's another thing with everything that's gone wrong on the world today especially with the food the poisoning of the air the water the food the crops you must make it a priority that you pray for blessings for your food okay so you know dear jesus please i thank you for this food please bless it with nourishment and take any evil things away from it and just let it be good for my body 
in Yeshua's name I pray, amen, because, he, you know, if it's got, just, you know where we're at today, you know that they're trying to kill us, and it's no secret that um, that is the agenda, to depopulate, get rid of us um, any way they can, and food is, unfortunately, it's the greatest weapon they've got, so make sure you ask for your blessings at dinner time, and I need to do that myself a lot more. Okay, um, what else are we going to talk about? Um, so, <clears throat> basically, there is a lot of things that are coming to fruition right now, and I believe the time is extremely short. I know we've been saying this, all of us, a lot of us, many generations have been saying it for, you know, 30, 40 years that the time is at hand, but now it's literally rattling on the door to open up. So where we're going to right now, we, I believe very much that everybody around the world, Catholics, Christians, um, even Muslims, look, even Muslims, because anybody this is what I was trying to get at before with religions and things like that if the heart intention which is the most important thing to God more than anything on this earth is what is in your heart how you okay just let me use this for example say I'm born in um, Iraq and there's I've got no choice but I'm brought up as a Muslim right if my heart is kind and good and I I live by a law of love how and and just say I go through my whole life and no one ever showed me about um, Jesus or the Bible or anything like that and then I died you cannot tell me <clears throat> that God would go nope you didn't hear the word of God you didn't cry out on Jesus name you didn't do this you didn't do anything that follows the doctrine so that's it, you're lost, you get to hell. I don't think so. No. <coughs> In Revelations, it talks about one of the churches. Um, where is it? Um, um, you know how it, how it talks about, you know, you didn't know the deep things of Satan, so I'm not going to put anything more on you. I believe very much that that is like people that are in really indoctrinated churches, like really full on Catholic churches. Um, and they, you know, there's a lot of bad practices within that, within that, not just that church, with a lot of churches. Okay. But if that person is in the pulpit sitting there with a heart of gold on the heart of fire for God, it doesn't matter where you are. Look, people can even be sitting or living with um, near the throne of Satan, okay, and God still sees those people that have a heart for him. So I don't know if that made any sense at all, but please just be aware that God sees you where you're at. You don't have to belong to a church. Actually, that would be the, one of the first things I would leave right now, to be honest, because God is going to come and penetrate each and us individually, and we are going to know that we have been lied to beyond excuse me, beyond our wildest imaginations, the lie, the father of lies, Satan, has, you know, has got a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more from the beginning of time to now, it is just exploding with deception. And I also believe very much that in uh, Second Thessalonians, where it states about, you know, because people loved to, love the lie, that people did not love the truth. They hated the truth so much that God sends a powerful delusion and that everybody will believe that lie. I believe that lie is the vaccine. I believe the vaccine has been there for a dual purpose, uh, for good and evil, because as it says in Revelation, how... In, in the, for the church of Laodicea, 
how I wish you were not lukewarm. Either be hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Now that is like, that is one of the most... Imagine your parents saying that to you. That is like saying, no matter what you've done, the thing that you've done right now, it breaks my heart and I just can't, I can't have you in my life anymore. That is, that's what God is effectively saying. So you need to make sure that your heart is on fire for God and don't be lukewarm. Study the word for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit, um, let the Holy Spirit be the discerning spirit on this book. And any text that you read, always ask for the discernment from Father God. That's I always make sure I do that. You know, um, I have a big heart to research. I love research. You know, I, I, whatever I'll, I'll find like a little thing. I'll be like, oh, and then I'll find ten things that go to that. I mean. So, you know, I get a real thrill. That's my thrill. I just, the, the end times, the global elite, the deep state, you know, everything that's coming, <laughs> darkness to light, hallelujah for that. <clears throat> all these children being rescued from trafficking, all that being exposed. Now, and that's another thing, actually, speaking of that, I, I people in my family... Um, you know, I talk a lot about it very openly, all the sick pedophilia that goes on and everything like that. But people, some people in my family are like, oh, I don't want to know that. You know, oh, I don't want to know that. That's horrible. You know, I'll just look to look to Jesus. And I understand that. But you know what? We can't live like that anymore because you going, I don't want to see it, is effectively giving them consent because you're being silent about it. So... It's time that we need to grow some balls, Christians. And and it, like it says in the scripture, um, you are not to be a part of it. You are, to, to, uh, you are not to be a part of evil, but you are to expose it. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just going to have a drink. It's two seconds. <clears throat> you are to expose evil. So just remember that, brothers and sisters. We are... The digital warriors right now and isn't it funny that <clears throat> Daniel also said well in Daniel that information would run to and fro to and fro and hasn't it ever like especially in the last probably two months it is just day after day after day literally two three times a day there's a big update that's massive that's going on in the world and the whole world is looking to the United States of America at the moment. And um, awesome. Thank you, Father. You just reminded me. <clears throat> Speaking of the United States, obviously Trump. As an Australian, this deeply upsets me that Christians, any Christian of any form, somebody that walks in the light of God, that tries to practice what he, what Jesus did, to try and imitate Jesus. <clears throat> what upsets me the most is any Christian that does not does not support Trump. Please understand that a Christian can support a man that is trying to do good on this world. There is no deception. Stop calling Donald Trump the Antichrist because he wants to bring peace and love to this. Um, to, to our world he is he has saved with his um, military alliance that he has he has saved hundreds of thousands of children and rescued them and you know and destroyed these underground tunnels where these rat disgusting evil creeps live and I'm not even going to go into that but what I'm trying to say is in every story in the bible there are people that come to the rescue okay god's just not sitting up there going don't you know don't worry about it <clears throat> i'll come back where i'm going to come back no he wants to see faith stand that is why no one can touch donald trump because he is a man of god and he's on mission from god 
he has never claimed that he is God or any of this crap that people go on with <clears throat> saying that he's all they're all part of the same cabal anything you know when you see pictures of Trump with Jeffrey Epstein for instance it was all prior to 2004 or something like that when he you know we've hang we've probably hung around very bad and evil people too we just didn't know about it but just because we stood next to them and had a photo with them does not mean we're part of this evil club okay as soon as Trump found out what Jeffrey Epstein was about and what these people were about that's he was um, actually a Democrat before and as soon as he found out what these people were doing because you know Trump's got money they want his money so they invited him to all his little clubs and all that sick shit they do he didn't like it and he exposed them and he became um, a Republican okay and you have to understand that that we are not demonized Donald Trump that is a grievous sin that you are doing Christians if you are saying that he is part of the cabal and he is um, this uh, a different head of the same snake oh my goodness Lord have mercy on people who say things like this okay just as I started at the beginning of this video and I said he who is for us is for us and he is against us is against us <clears throat> Trump is for God he is for America just because you were told at the pulpit that the world has to go through a horrible, you know, a horrible destruction, tribulation, and, and there's no way that the world can get wonderful and glorious again. That's garbage, okay? There is a great revolution in faith and spirit coming. You will see. You will see because the people will have enough very shortly. And it is through the leadership, not worship, the leadership of Donald Trump is what will help us help us stand side by side with each other now please for the love of God stop demonizing that man we should be praying for him we should be praying for the military alliance that is putting their own lives at risk because they cannot handle what is going on behind the scenes in the darkness okay they are the ones that are bringing everything to light at the moment okay they are working for God so stop demonizing them in every every story in the Bible there was people or a person that stood up and was able to bring the rest of us to fight okay this is what we need to do and the the, the pastors and the priests all around the world have have done a great injustice by making us think that this person's the Antichrist, this person's the Antichrist, this person's the Antichrist, just because they're in politics. Why would God not put somebody to help the world in the highest position of the world? You watch him come back. He shall be back. And as I'm saying this, because I'm in Australia, it is July 4th, so happy Independence Day for the States when you see this. Um so many wonderful things were ha happening you know the um nasara and jasara you would have heard of that where all the um you know people are saying oh that's just new world order it's all digital currency trying to um you know it's just the new world order with a different sort of a new age name type thing and people are literally mocking the blessings and promises of god God in his own word said that he is storing up the wealth of the wicked to give to the righteous in the last days. That is exactly what Nasera and Grisera is. You need to be open-minded. The Lord, our Father God, made us intelligent beings. Use your eyes to see. Use your ears to hear and use your mouth to just keep quiet. And be still let father God tell us and lead us into truth and understanding <clears throat>